Welcome to St. Luke Lutheran Church in Clinton Township, Michigan, for another in our series of devotional studies on one of the great hymns of the Faith from Lutheran Service book. I'm Reverend Edward Stee, with me as always, Deaconess Carol King playing the organ, and our office manager, Sue Drysdale, who is taking care of our recording. Today, we'll study hymn 941 in Lutheran Service book, which is entitled, we praise you and acknowledge you, O God. A hymn that is found way in the back of our hymnal in a section of 17 hymns that are called Biblical Canticles. What does this mean? Is there a distinction between a hymn and a Biblical Canticle? Well, all of our hymns are Biblical. That is, they all weave together various Biblical texts those portions of the Bible are sometimes quoted directly in a hymn, sometimes paraphrased, sometimes given a poetic restatement. As we've seen, most of our hymns draw on a number of different parts of the Bible, scriptures referenced often in that bottom right-hand corner of the hymn page. Biblical canticles, on the other hand, often, but not always, present just one portion of Holy Scripture, deal with just one scripture in the hymn that is presented. For example, hymns 933, 934, and 935 in LSB all are dealing with Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55, that song known as the Magnificat, the song that the Virgin Mary sang after being visited by the Archangel Gabriel and told that she would, by the Holy Spirit's power and overshadowing, become the mother of God the Son. In LSB, we also have chanted settings of that song, the Magnificat, in both the order of Vespers and in the order of evening prayer. Moreover, the first five hymns in this biblical canticle section of the hymnal are actually chanted settings of two songs of Moses, one from Exodus 15 and the other from Deuteronomy chapter 32. The song of Isaiah, that is the first song of Isaiah, the song of Hannah, and a chanted setting of Isaiah chapter 61. You could take any one of those five hymns and compare them side by side with the scripture from which they are drawn, and you would very clearly see the connection between the hymn and that scripture. However, the biblical canticle that we're looking at today is slightly different in this regard. As indicated at the bottom of the page of the hymn, this hymn is a versification that is, a setting in verses of a very ancient chanted canticle called the Te Deum Laudimus, which is a Latin phrase meaning, You God, we praise. The Te Deum draws on a number of biblical passages rather than just one section of Holy Scripture. Well, as we look at this hymn, and this setting of that chanted canticle. There's a legend surrounding who wrote it. And the legend is that St. Ambrose, who lived from about 337 until 397, along with St. Augustine, who lived from 354 to 430, that they together composed this hymn spontaneously on the night that Augustine was baptized in the year 387. Well, whether or not that legend is true, the Te Deum, from the very earliest centuries of the church, has been an important element in the church's order of services, most often being found in morning offices, such as the Order of Matins. Our own Lutheran service book has indeed placed chanted settings of the Te Deum in the order of Matins and in the order of morning prayer. Besides 
having two hymn versions of this biblical canticle in that back section, the biblical canticle section of the hymnal. And those two hymn settings are first hymn 940, and I'll sing just the first phrase, I'm sure it'll be very familiar to most of you. Holy God, we praise thy name. And then also today's hymn that we're considering, hymn number 941. This setting, 941 of the Te Deum, is an example of how God continues in every generation of the church to provide us with gifted authors and composers of sacred song. And as we have seen with the hymns that we've already studied in this devotional series, those authors are often clergymen of the church. Today's hymn being no exception. Reverend Stephen P. Starkey, who wrote this text for hymn 90, uh, 941, is in fact a pastor in our own Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. He used the ancient Te Deum Canticle to produce a thrilling new hymnic setting. Well, a little bit about Pastor Starkey. He was born right here in Michigan, Bay City, 1955. He went on to study at what was then known as Concordia Junior College in Ann Arbor, receiving from there the Associate of Arts degree in 1975, and then going on to complete his four-year undergraduate study at Concordia Teachers College, as it was known then, in River Forest, Illinois, receiving the Bachelor of Arts in 1977, as a major in art and having a minor in music. He then was called to teach right here in Macomb County at Lutheran High School North, where he served until 1979 when he enrolled at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne to study to become, if God will, a pastor. And indeed, God was so willing, he received from CTS, the Masters of Divinity in 1983, and then was called to serve God as pastor for LCMS congregations, first in Illinois, then in Connecticut, before being called back to his hometown, Bay City, to be pastor of St. John in uh, what is called Amaleth in the year 2000. Very recently, he retired as pastor of St. John, but I think it quite likely that he'll continue in retirement writing hymns, maybe even more than he was able to write being a full-time pastor. He began, according to his own account, writing hymns at the end of his seminary study, and as of the writing of this wonderful resource from Concordia Publishing House called the Lutheran Service Book Companion to Hymnal, uh, which is a two-volume set with, as you can see by the weight of it, a wealth of information about the hymns and the composers of hymns in our hymnal and the history of those hymns. As of the writing of uh, this hymnal companion, he had already composed over 200 hymn texts. His hymns are found in a number of different church hymnals, and as of the writing of the hymnal companion, uh, had been translated into Swedish, Chinese, Russian, Spanish, and Swahili. Our Lutheran service book includes 25 of his hymn texts, as well as six of his translations of existing hymns. Most of Reverend Starkey's hymns, according to his own account, were created with a specific tune in mind. And that is the case for this hymn, which is set to a powerful tune known as Thaxted, a tune that comes from a famous composer, Gustav Holst, from his orchestral suite called The Planets, specifically the melody assigned to hymn 941 came from Jupiter within that orchestral suite. The stirring majesty of this tune is a very worthy vehicle to carry the powerful text of the Te Deum Laudamus. 
in stanzas one and two of this hymn, we are allowed to confess the unseen reality that our voices in the church on earth are joined with those of the church in glory, including the apostles, prophets, and martyrs of the church, along with God's holy angel chorus in praise, adoration, and thanksgiving to him who alone is Lord. Now there are many lords on earth who may own a portion of this world's land or even in some cases claim ownership of people. But in the Te Deum, we praise him who is true Lord, Lord of all, including all people. For he not only is our creator, but he has purchased our lives by the life that he poured out by God the Son on the cross. Then in stanza three of this hymn, our praise shifts specifically to that one who poured his life out for us, God the Son, Jesus the Christ, reciting there the glories of his boundless love for us, love that moved him to lay aside his glory, to be born of a virgin's womb, to be crucified for us and placed into a tomb. And then by his resurrection, he opened heaven's kingdom to all who would believe. Leading us to the final stanza, a confession that this resurrected and ascended Lord Jesus, having accomplished our salvation by that work, now sits in splendid glory at God the Father's right hand, upholding all things in earth and heaven, and confessing further, as he himself has promised, that he will come again as our judge on the great and final day of this first creation. This hymn, therefore, ends having that day of judgment in view with a beautiful prayer to Jesus Christ. So help your servants, you have redeemed by blood, we pray. May we with saints be numbered, where praises never end, in glory everlasting. Amen, O Lord. Amen. Well, we will sing hymn 941 now, and by the way, our handbell choir will be playing this hymn this coming Sunday, May 30th, the Feast of the Holy Trinity.
God of majesty, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be with your servants who make art and music for your people, that with joy we on earth may glimpse your beauty and rejoice in your grace. Bring us to the fulfillment of that hope of perfection that will be ours as we stand before your unveiled glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.